Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, this is another episode of Bullet Points, and today we're doing something that hits me to my core, and it makes me a little elevated, so I could show some spice on this one, I'm going to be honest. Now, if you're new, the Bullet Points is a segment that we do in the afternoon, which supplements our 9 p.m. slot where we cover the 2A news, the politics, the why, and really break down what's happening to give you an idea of where it's going. But Bullet Points is a little more focused on the personality, the editorials, and meeting the left, gun control specifically, where they live in editorial land at the leftist intelligentsia. And today is no different because we are going to approach this article from NPR. And this really cooks my grits, I'm going to be honest. Using children as a manipulative tool to move things in the way that they desire, but it's going to fail because this episode is about to destroy this argument. And it really makes me angry because you don't use children like this. Keep our kids out of this. Anyway. Everything's in the description box below for the article for yourself, and I want to know what you guys think because I think this is important, but let's dive in. So again, NPR, okay? High gun sales and more time at home have led to more accidental shooting by kids. Okay, first of all, I want to say something really important. Gun ownership is a responsibility. If you have children, it's a responsibility of the parent. It's not a responsibility of the child. Safe gun ownership, safe gun storage, safe gun responsibility as a whole is a core tenet that we do in the Second Amendment world. This is terrible. No children, child should have to go through this, and a child should not be exposed to this. That's what I'm going to say. That's the way I look at it in my life, and that's the way I teach anybody that I'm training. Now, this irritates me because they're starting to manipulate facts and really make numbers speak for them by twisting them, not by stating what's happening. So here we go. This is a really good example because you're going to run across this in your day-to-day -day conversations, and this is a good way to approach it. Accidental gunshot deaths by children handling a gun jumped 31% during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic compared to a year earlier, new data shows. Now, right off the bat, that kind of leans towards, well, it's jumped 31%, so something is wrong. we got to talk about this. Let's keep going. There were 98 deaths that resulted from unintentional shootings by children from March through December of 2019 compared to 128 over the same time period in 2020. Research by the advocacy group Every Town for Gun Safety shows. Now, that's a gun control group. I'm a little wary of gun stats that are given by a gun control group because they could twist them for their favor. And that's what happened here. And we're going to excoriate this. Okay, because this, I guess this makes me angry. And the trend continues to worsen during the pandemic, the group says. So now there's been a big jump. Let me just track through this article. There's been a big jump. Something has changed. There's more. And the trend is continuing through the pandemic. So the problem hasn't been quelled. Here we go. And I want you to pay attention to not only the optics, but also the verbiage here. So far in 2021, there have been at least 259 unintentional shootings by children, resulting in 104 deaths and 168 injuries nationally. According to the group's not an accident index, every town is a U.S. nonprofit that advocates for gun control. Well, we know that because we talk about them all the time. At the pace the organization projects these incidents in 2021 are set to surpass even the records reached in 2017. That year, 383 cases of accidental shootings by kids occurred, and at least 156 people were killed. So the first thing I'm going to hit on is look at the optics right here. You notice that there's an ad right there that says, first-time gun buyers help push record U.S. gun sales amid stream of mass shootings. You notice that that link is right there next to the state, the um, fact that we're on pace to, air quotes, break a record. By the way, the statistics and the math break down to we're going to match that record or plus three, not plus 500 like they're insinuating. But again, that's the point. This whole article is hinting at and angling at something to make you associate what they're not saying. And we're going to come back to this part in one second, but let me show you what they say in the last and they wrap it up. The organization says COVID-19 lockdowns, lack of child care, record gun sales in the U.S. during the pandemic, and a reported surge in first-time gun owners may be to blame. So notice the wordplay they use. It might be it. I can't guarantee it. Well, in this entire article, they've increased stats by 31%. We're on power to match a record. This is terrible. Pair it up with first-time gun buyer's image, and now you're saying, well, it could be record gun sales, and it's possible it might be first-time gun owners. This is literally framing. They are framing it for you to take away something they're not saying. But now I'm going to go back and really destroy this because this makes me angry right here, this part. This is manipulation of statistics. At the pace the organization projects, these incidents in 2021 are set to surpass even the record reached in 2017. Now that piece right there, 2017, the record was set in 2017. That was four years ago. So I'm going to lay out what happened four years ago. In 2017, we were in the middle of the Trump presidency. 
I was involved in the industry at that time, there was something called the Trump slump. No guns were sold. No one could even sell a gun. They couldn't give away a gun. Ammo was plentiful. It was like the salmon of Capistrano. It was everywhere. The milk flowed like honey. There was ammo everywhere you could look. Guns weren't being sold that much because everyone had them. There was no fear in people's minds. So how did a record be set at that, dur- that time in 2017 when not we didn't have the situation of 40 million guns sold, but now 40 million guns get sold in 2020 and 2021 collectively, and there's a rise, but we still aren't going to beat the goal or the, uh, excuse me, the, um, the record of 2017 when there was no gun purchases. That's because there's no direct correlation. This is the manipulation of the left where they go into the statistics and they say, well, we're on pace to break the record. And then bullet points, my show says, well, wait a minute. Why was the record set in 2017 if the same amount of guns, but you're inferring that the guns were the problem? Because it falls apart. And you're manipulating and using the stats on children to pull out the heartstrings, which is disgusting. Children should not be involved in this debate in any way. They shouldn't be involved in the gun world at all. They're not legal adults. They are not some, this is not something that's for them. That's just like politics. You don't bring children into it. Keep this between you and I, unless you're afraid that I'm going to dismantle an article like this and call you for what you are, because that is some crap. That's what I have for you guys on today's bullet points. I'll see you at the 9 p.m. slot tonight, and until then, see you later.